Hi, today's text comes from Psalm 133. Follow along with me as I read from the ESV. A song of ascents of David. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Pray with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for these words as we draw our attention to them. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would open up our hearts and our minds and our ears today. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's sermon title is, Why Should We Stay United? Well, it's been a long 13 months, hasn't it? We haven't been able to meet as a church in person. We've been meeting online via Zoom, and even the sermons have been pre-recorded prior to Sundays. Even this sermon is being recorded on a Friday afternoon. If anything that the pandemic has revealed, it exposed how deeply divided our nation is, whether it's along party lines, or whether it's even about issues like gun control, or even the vaccination efforts. It seems like our country is so divided, unity is just not in sight. But the sad reality is, even our churches are divided, whether it's along denominational lines. And it seems like there's a new denomination splitting off almost every year, where People just cannot agree and churches cannot agree on issues such as women's ordination or which translation of the Bible to use. And it's just sad to see that instead of staying united, we are dividing. And the Bible is abundantly clear that God's people are to be united. And Deuteronomy 6.4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are one. And because they are one, God is calling us to be one. Even when Jesus prayed in John 17, he prays, Holy Father, keep them, them meaning the disciples or the church, in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. So the unity of the church body needs to testify, reflect the unity of the Godhead. And yet that is not happening in today's world. So if the church can't stay united, how can we expect our nation to be united? How can we expect our world to be united? Well, today's Psalm, Psalm 133, is one of the Song of Ascents. Now, the Song of Ascents are from Psalm 120 to 134. And Psalm 133 is also considered to be a wisdom psalm as well. So the idea of Songs of Ascents are songs that the people of God sang as they were journeying to Jerusalem. And whenever you're traveling towards Jerusalem, you're always traveling up. So as you're traveling up, you are singing these songs, and these songs are worshipful songs. It's a very beautiful psalm. And so let's look at our psalm. It's a very short psalm, only three verses. But let's look at these verses and see what truth God wants us to know. Verse 1 says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It's saying, look, how good. And how pleasant it is when brothers are united, when the brothers are one. Now, the brothers here are believers, God's people. So when God's people are united, when God's people are one, then it is good. And that word good has a sense of completion. And pleasant also has a meaning of wonderful. So what is unity? Unity is good. Unity is whole. Unity is pleasant. And so the church has to be one. And when, when the church is one, there is a sense of goodness. There's a sense of wholeness. 
there's a sense of completion, like we complete each other when we are together, and it is wonderful. And we find joy when we are one. Now, how can we be one? Well, we need to be one in Christ. The Apostle Paul in Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, which was the big division of that time. Slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So there should be nothing that divides the church. There should be nothing that separates the church when we are one in Christ. And many times our ego gets in the way. Or we feel like we're not getting anything out of church, and which is why churches split. And that's not how God intended it to be, and that's not the will of God. The will of God is that we are one in Christ Jesus. So when Jesus Christ is our foundation, and when we stand firm on Jesus Christ, then we become one. Becoming one means we are one body, that we have one purpose. And that is to worship, and that is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. And that is our purpose as a church. And we need to have that expectancy when we gather as a church. So it is important to gather as a church. And even though we are not able to gather in person, we need to gather as many times as we can via Zoom. So currently we're meeting on Sundays and I want to encourage you brothers and sisters to reach out to those who haven't been on these calls. Sometimes we only have a half of the household joining the calls. No, but we are all one. So as a family, we need to be joining these calls. And so what is unity like? Well, verses two and three unpack what unity is like. So the first example that the psalmist used is oil. Here he says, it is like precious oil on the head. Now, precious, that word precious is the same word as good that we saw earlier in verse 1. So it is like good oil, expensive oil on the head, running down on the beard. On the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. Now notice here, running down is used twice in this verse. So there's the idea of coming down. So all good things come down from heaven. All good things come from above. And we need to understand this, folks. Nothing comes from below. All good things come from our Father in heaven. And precious oil is not something that we really appreciate today, but precious oil is something that's very expensive. And here, and when people were anointed with oil in the past, they would, they would just rub the head with oil. So the scent comes in and it's really a good feeling. But when you pour oil, that just shows you how generous our Father in heaven is. He is pouring oil and it's running down, running down the beard. Here it says on the beard of Aaron. And this is referring to Exodus 29, 7, where it says, you shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head, that's Aaron's head, and anoint him. So as a, as a priest, he was anointed and that was a cause for celebration. Also, oil represents the power of God. Oil represents the presence of God and oil represents the blessings of God. So the blessings of God, the presence of God, the power of God is in abundance to his people. So when the church gathers in his name with one heart as one body, then the church will be able to experience the power and the presence of God. And isn't that what we want, church? When we gather that we want to don't you want to experience the power of God? I do. And I think if we all have this understanding of Scripture, that we are one and we are gathered to worship God. And when we gather, it is like God pouring oil upon Aaron 
where the oil is just flowing down from head onto the clothes, that we'll experience God's presence like that. If we have that expectancy, even when we're meeting online, then I believe we will experience the power of God in our lives. And this is why it's so important for us to stay together. And this is why it's so important for us to be united. And this is what unity is like. And so not only is it the will of God, we are able to experience the power of God by being one. And lastly, in verse three, it says, it is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. So now we go from Aaron and the oil, and now we, we are pulling way back and we're looking at Mount Hermon. Now, Mount Hermon is the highest point in that region of Israel, and is, it's a snow-capped mountain. So from there, water comes down, dew comes down from Hermon. And in an, er in an arid area and desert area like Israel, water represents life. So it's like life coming down. It's like life flowing down. Once again, it's coming down from top down, from above. It is like life. It is like dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. Zion is the city of God. It's, it's Jerusalem. And it's, from, it's there where the Lord has commanded the blessing life forevermore. So when the people of God live together in unity, then the people of God experience the power of God. And God's intention is to bless his people. And that's why in verse one, it says it is good and it is pleasant when the people of God dwell, live, gather in unity. So church, we are to dwell in unity. We are to gather as one. And so let's do this, folks. Let's not use the pandemic as an excuse not to be one. We need to be praying for each other. We need to be encouraging one another. We need to reach out to one another. Our Sunday gatherings are not enough. During the week, let's send text messages to one another. Let's call one another. And I wanna encourage you, and you know who you are, where only half of you are present on the calls. I wanna encourage you to encourage the others to join in. And I believe when we gather as one, we are gonna experience the power of God in our lives. And I believe God is preparing us so that when the restrictions are all lifted and we find a new home and we gather to worship, that we will truly experience the power of God as well. So the Wall Church, let us be the church that God has called us to be. Let us be one in Christ by yielding to him. We are only able to be one through Jesus Christ who had his perfect relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit broken. His relationship was broken so that we could experience true unity with God. Our relationship with our Father in heaven has been restored because of Jesus Christ. So let's look to him. Let's give him thanks. And as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, may we all be one as well. Let me read to you this psalm one more time. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there, the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. And may we experience God's blessings in our lives as we dwell in unity.
And all this is made possible because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for these words. And Lord, as you are one, may we be one through the power of you, Holy Spirit. May we know your joy and may we experience your power and your presence in our lives as we worship you in spirit and truth. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.